Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, BACnet Sensor Wiring, Installation and Application Benefits, which is going to be presented by Eddie Kelly and DJ Chisholm. We really appreciate you joining us today. My name is Ron Pokowitz, and I'll be your moderator. Because we know you may want to watch this webinar again, it will be recorded and posted on Bolimo's YouTube site. And we will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, and we'd like to hear from you. So at any time, I invite you to type your questions into the question box, and I will read them aloud during the question and answer session. Our presenters will answer as many questions as we have time for, but rest assured, if we do not get to your question, you will receive an email with your answer. Thank you again for attending, and Eddie, it's all yours. All right. Uh, thanks, Ron, uh, for the introduction, and, and thanks, everyone, for giving us some of your time today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eddie Kelly, and I'm the Sensors and Meters Product Manager uh, for Belimo here, specifically in the Americas region. I'm joined today by my colleague DJ Chisholm from the field support team in a collective effort, again, to discuss BACnet communication within our sensors portfolio. Um, and we're also going to touch on the benefits of using BACnet and, and really go into the specifics behind wiring and installation. All right, um, so jumping right into this here. Uh, firstly, I wanted to give you guys you know, a quick idea of what we will be speaking about here today. Um, we're going to first you know, start off looking at a, a very generic HVAC control loop um, specific to sensors. Uh, we're then going to go into a high level overview on what exactly BACnet um, actually is. And then at this point, DJ will take over and go into the details uh, behind installation and wiring BACnet sensors, really specifically comparing BACnet units to, uh, to a more traditional analog type uh, style of sensor. Uh, DJ will then touch on leveraging this type of communication and, and really discuss how this can benefit your system, um, both physically and monetarily. Um, I'll then cl close this webinar out uh, discussing really the high level benefits that BACnet um, brings to your application. And again, as Ron mentioned, and, and as always, we will finish up with a question and answer session. All right, so let's get into this here. All right, so, so again, uh, the first topic here really is, is just a generic slide on HVAC control loops. Um, so this image here is meant to be, again, a very generic control loop. Uh, really consisting of air flowing through some sort of coil or, or heat exchanger, um, a variable being measured. You know, let's just assume in this in this scenario it's it's temperature. Um, the sensor performing the measurement, um, a, a controller, and of course a control device, most likely an actuator. We'll pretend it's a Blimo orange actuator um, that will modulate a valve again based on the sensor's reading. Um, for the purpose of this specific presentation, again, let's let's focus on the sensor side of things. Um, and, and as you can see here, the sensor is measuring the temperature of the air coming through the coil. Uh, the sensor itself then sends a signal to the local controller, um, and the controller then takes action you know, based on how it's programmed. Um, the signal that's sent from the sensor to the controller can come in many different variants, uh, many different shapes and forms. Um, generally speaking, there, there are numerous passive temperature signals, uh, such as NTC 10K2, 10K3, PT1000, Nickel1000, and so on. Um, there's also analog signals available, as, as, as I'm sure most of you know, um, in the form of voltage and current. It could be 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 5 volts, uh, 2 to 10 volts for modulation, you know, things like this. Um, beyond these analog signals, th there's also many different types of communication protocols available, um, such as BACnet, Modbus, MBus, um, you know, MPBus, which is really specific to Belimo. And you know, on that front, there are also many other proprietary signals out there. Um, there are many advantages, again, to using communication protocols like BACnet and so on in, in the realm of installation wiring and control. Um, and so this pretty much leads us, you know, really into this next slide here on, on exactly what is BACnet and, and really where did it come from. Um, all right, so, so BACnet actually stands for uh, Building Automation Control Network. It is free for everyone to use and, and was specifically designed by ASHRAE. Um, for HVAC, lighting, security, and, and life safety types of applications. Um, BACnet itself, it's, it's aimed to be a very common and generic protocol. Um, it's used by many different vendors and systems you know, all around the world. Um, it's pretty dominant here in the Americas region as well. Um, generally speaking, again, you know, BACnet really is a, it, it's, it's simply, it's a way of communicating and controlling data you know, between multiple devices. Um, this kind of, uh, 
kicks us off this whole intro introduction here. Um, really at this point, I would like to introduce you guys all to uh, my colleague DJ here as he jumps in and really walks you through the physical wiring of BACnet sensors, which again, really illustrates some of the benefits in, in using BACnet within your systems. Um, so thanks DJ, you can take it from here. Thanks, Eddie. So again, as uh, Eddie said, my name is DJ Chisholm. Um, my role at Olimo is uh, field support for Canada, and uh, I also kind of, in the in the Olimo Americas organization, I am one of the people that uh, would help with advanced kind of backnet and communicating uh, device support. So to get right into it, so uh, here we have a, a typical application with analog. Um, control devices. So in this particular instance, we've got uh, you know, a, a temperature sensor, so a space temperature sensor, a uh, pressure, a duct pressure sensor, and a, you know, either a humidity, a duct humidity, or a CO2 sensor. Um, and each of these points or specific devices requires a wire from the sensor itself and straight back to the DDC controller input. So depending on the location, that could be hundreds of feet. Um, on each of these uh, points as well, the programmer of the DDC system needs to know some of the details on the sensor when they're programming and commissioning. For instance, with the pressure sensor, they would need to know the signal range, you know, such as 4 to 20 milliamp, uh, the pressure range, you know, perhaps it's a 0 to 10 inch water column sensor, um, and whether or not it's bidire bidirectional. And with that, they would apply an analog input configuration, set the scale range, and potentially convert it uh, to another unit if the unit that you know the sensor is made with doesn't really apply or match their desired unit of measure. Moving in with the into a backnet an integrated control scenario. So with backnet MSTP, uh, we replace the multiple physical inputs on the DDC controller with a single MSTP connection. On the device side, each device would daisy chain to the next closest sensor, and each device could have multiple data points with still only one physical network connection at the controller. So on the first sensor, for instance, the device could be an IAQ room sensor, uh, which would output a multitude of points such as temperature, relative humidity, CO2, and dew point. The second sensor is a differential pressure sensor with true auto zero, uh, and with you know backnet or Modbus functionality would also be able to report volumetric flow. Customization of the optional LCD display is also a feature that is enabled with the backnet connectivity on this device. Uh, and finally, the last sensor here we're showing a duct temp humidity and dual channel CO2 sensor. So like the the IAQ room sensor, this device has temperature, relative humidity, CO2, and dew point objects, and also includes uh, enthalpy and absolute humidity, all on the same uh, two-wire network. So if the objects on these three devices were represented as physical inputs on the DDC system, 12 inputs would be required. Ultimately, more system variables are available with less wiring and less physical points, which can reduce overall install and wiring costs and hardware costs for that matter. Uh, with the analog sensor, of course, we discussed needing to know the particular signal units and scale configuration of the sensor uh, in order to configure them to display properly with the analog input on the DDC system. With a backnet sensor, these dynamics are already displayed as a properly scaled value without any, any really thinking about it. As long as it's communicating, you don't need to, need to know whether or not the installer used the correct wire or even wired it correctly uh, back to the input because the inputs don't exist. Uh, if you can talk to the sensor, you get the correct value. Pretty straightforward. Moving into the next one. So here we have kind of a larger system. So it's the same system, but represent, represented on the previous slide, but we're expanding it across multiple zones. So in this case, you have the same three sensors installed across three different zones. Rather than bringing the sensors back to the physical local controllers, the additional sensors can be added to the same MSDP subnet to reduce the physical input, uh, to reduce the uh, physical inputs as well as reduce wiring and installation time, all while gaining the benefit of additional available objects on the backnet sensor.
And lastly, we kind of wanted to get into a little bit about um, what we can do to leverage uh, backnet or communicating actuators. So here we've got a you know a traditional control with sensors. So similar to the control loop that Eddie showed in the one of the first slides, um, we've got sensors uh, on the left and actuators on the right. Uh, the actuators, of course, with feedback. So we've got several I/O happening here. Um, and, and you can see there are basically 10 inputs and outputs represented on this screen. Uh, this might represent a significant amount of wiring depending on the controller's proximity to the sensor and actuator. Doing the same thing with a backnet MSTP application, one of those sensors can go back to one of our communicating actuators depending on the, the flavor of communication actuators, some sensors also take up to two. And those signals will be transmitted over the communication bus and available as an object on the communicating actuators backnet interface. So to broaden that across the whole system, uh, we see reduced physical IO on the DDC controller so we, with that, we see a significant savings in wiring by daisy chaining these devices. And by bringing the analog sensors back to the actuator in the same zone, we reduce that wiring cost as well. Eddie, I think this brings it back to you. All right, beautiful. Um, thank you, DJ. Uh, very, very well said. Um, so as we start to kind of close this webinar out, you know, it's quite clear that there are many different, you know, application benefits, both, um, you know, monetarily, you know, time savings and in installation, um, hardware, you know, length of wire, you know, amount of wire used, um, you know, the amount of actual hardware in terms of controllers used, especially when you're looking at different zones, things like this. Um, so again, you know, generally speaking, um, you know, using a communication protocol like BACnet, it, it allows the devices, you know, specifically on the MSTP side, it, it allows devices to be daisy chained uh, together. So again, you know, th this really helps save time and money um, when it comes specific, you know, to installation. Um, and again, it, it also decreases the amount um, of, of physical controllers needed, um, you know, that's purely based on just a simple IO count. Um, you know, BACnet is used by numerous vendors, which makes, um, you know, integration, uh, retrofitting, device replacement, um, you know, device selection much more straightforward. Um, so if, if you look at like a traditional type of sensor, you know, DJ kind of touched on this earlier as well, um, that it, especially on the analog side, the sensor itself, you know, converts its reading into, you know, some voltage or current signal that's selected. Um, and, and that signal is scaled, you know, based on a measurement range. You know, it could be PPM level for a CO2 sensor, um, you know, percentage for relative humidity, dew point temperature, and so on. Um, so, for example, let's let's just you know use a traditional analog CO2 sensor as an example, um, with a range of uh, zero to 2,000 PPM, with let's just say a zero to 10 volt output. Um, so again, the max reading of of 2,000 PPM here in the in this uh, example would correlate to the max of output value, of course, of, of 10 volts, right? Because it's scaled uh, evenly there. Your system is then gonna need a bit of code to convert that voltage signal back into its PPM value. Um, again, you know, based on the measuring range that is selected in and being used. Whereas if, if you have a BACnet sensor, you get a properly scaled value, you know, with the correct units w without even really thinking about it or having to take any extra steps. Um, so again, if, if you can connect and, and, and talk directly to a BACnet sensor, you're, you're immediately getting the correct values in a more usable format. Um, so, you know, looking at value add here, this, this really is an incredible piece of, of added value, um, especially when looking at all of the potential, you know, installation issues and, and things like this that can occur with an analog type of, uh, analog type of installation. Um, really, it, you know, also it includes, you know, different errors that can happen when programming controllers and, and you know, BMS systems and things like this. Um, we're also in the process here at Belimo of bringing customization to our customers, um, which includes pre-programming and setup of, of our sensors prior to being received by our customers. 
Um, so again, you know, this, this is another kind of great effort in terms of, you know, really making our products installed as easy as possible and, and you know, really straightforward. Um, you know, our, our common sensors theme is ease of installation and commissioning and, and you know, moving forward again, we want to continue this theme so that this also includes a customization aspect and ensuring that, you know, having the availability to, to deliver sensors pre-programmed, pre-parameterized, um, again, so that they arrive, you know, on site in, in you, you know, customers' hands, ready to be installed, ready to go. Um, so, I mean, with, with that final thought, that, that about wraps things up on the webinar front here. Um, again, I want to thank you guys, you know, for, for your time here today. Um, we now have the, the question and answer session. So, Ron, we'll, we'll shoot this back to you for the Q&A side of things. And again, thanks to everyone for, for your time here. And thanks again for DJ, uh, to DJ for the, the great support. Excellent. Thank you, Eddie. Before we move on to questions and answers, uh, please be sure to follow Gulimo on social media to be aware of what's happening. First question that has come in is how many sent, how many devices can be daisy chained together? Uh, so I think I can handle this one, Eddie. Uh, okay. This is kind of manufacturer specific, but I mean the backnet spec has a kind of built into it a an object or a, a thing called Max Masters, and it's able you know up to 127 is, is the Max Masters, so the Max address you can have which means starting at zero, that's 128 devices. Realistically, some vendors, you know, some BMS vendors will limit that to 99, but in reality, to get really good stable communication, limiting that to somewhere closer to 33, or, you know, in the middle there would be quite a bit better. So the number of points that are communicating, the number of uh, reads and writes that are happening across the network. The more of that that happens, the less devices really, uh, or the more, you know, the less devices are uh, bogging down the network. So, I mean, having a, keeping the number low means a more stable, better communicating network. Hopefully that answers that. Thank you, DJ. Here's another one for DJ, I believe. Is there a recommendation for type of cable used with BACnet sensors? So I can't recall the exact number, but there is a you know a, a typical Belden spec that a lot of people use. Uh, it's a 24-2 twisted pair, uh, low capacitance and shielded wire is generally what most vendors recommend. Uh, some will use a 22-2. Uh, same idea though, a low capacitance, uh, twisted pair shielded. And uh, some vendors do as well require a three wire. So, uh, you know, with a, with a drain. But uh, my recommendation for most is uh, just the 24 2 twisted pair low cap shielded. Excellent. Okay. I think this is for Eddie. Do we have a BACnet pitch statement available? Um, so that is a very good question. Uh, we do have a BACnet pick statement available. I, I actually think you could just get it by Googling. Um, but if you don't want to Google, you have our, our website of, uh, up, belimo.us. Um, all of the BACnet products actually have a little, um, if, if, you, if you, you know, search for the part number, get the part number up on the website. In the technical documentation section, um, on the bottom, there's like a, a system integration section, and that's where the BACnet PIC statement lies um, for, for all of our BACnet products. And I believe that's across the board, actuators and valves um, as well. So the answer is yes, it's available on our website. Um, it's available, I believe, through BACnet as well. And, and yeah, you can get that through the website or by just simply Googling. Okay, which Belimo sensors have BACnet? Ooh, I got this one. Um, so as of today, right now, we've got uh, temp humidity CO2 sensors in, in BACnet form. Um, we currently have pressure sensors in Modbus. We are in the process of bringing BACnet sensors out in, in pressure, in, in the differential pressure portfolio as well. Um, so that's in route and coming. Um, we are also uh, coming out with a new phase of room sensors, which will include uh, displays as well, an integrated touchscreen display. These guys will also have both Modbus and BACnet variants, uh, variants available. Um, so uh, for, for today, 
air quality sensors, so temp humidity, uh, CO2, um, also outdoor variants of our air, qual air quality, so outdoor temp humidity sensors are available in BACnet. Um, and then in process of coming in is, is the 2280p, so our differential pressures in, in BACnet, as well as the room sensors. So room sensors for temp humidity and CO2 with display in BACnet. Yep. Okay, next question. Are your Valimo sensors BTL listed? The Belimo, uh, so, so the current sensors available today, so our, our air quality sensors for duct, um, again, temp humidity CO2, also the temp humidity outdoor sensors, um, those are for sure BTL listed. Um, I forgot to mention, we also are coming out with a thermal energy meter next week. Um, this will also have a BACnet output available. Um, so as of today, right now, BTL listed again are the, the duct variant air quality sensors, um, the outdoor temp humidity sensors, and the thermal energy meters that are coming out next week are in process of being BTL listed. Um, so their website, I would imagine, should be updated uh, sooner rather than later. So those will be BTL listed um, soon enough. Thank you, Ready? Can you discuss power requirements for the sensors? Don't they require 24 volt power as well as MSTP wiring? DJ, you want okay. to take this one? Sure. Beautiful. Yes, exactly. Um, and they do. That is correct. So, a lot of cases, uh, depending on the the installer, they might install a transformer at the same panel uh, where the RS-485 terminates. So they will daisy chain that along with with the uh, the network wiring as well. As far as power requirements or what VA or what these might use. I don't have the specs right in front of me, but uh, that is something we can follow up with after the webinar if that's needed. Okay. In a Niagara environment, will each sensor count against a licensed device? Can you repeat that one? In a, in a Niagara's environment, Will each sensor count against a licensed device? I believe that yes, it will. Um, they are each an address device, so I believe they will, but uh, that is something, again, we can verify and uh, get back with. Okay. Does the mod actuator only have one input? The dash mod actuators only have one input. Uh, the IP actuators have two, I believe, and the uh, PM or the P, PM and PK series and PR series uh, that has backnet, they have two physical inputs as well. Okay. Do you know if there are any plans to have display units for backnet objects on the MSTP network? Um, I, I could jump in here really quickly and, and again, as DJ mentioned, for a lot of these questions, we'll definitely touch base afterwards and just confirm our, our answers here. Um, I don't think we have any specific plans for just uh, including a generic um, a, a generic display through BACnet. Um, we are looking at different ideas and options across different por portions of our portfolio. Um, you know, Maybe I could reach out or we will reach out on, on these questions afterwards and maybe get some more details to, to whoever asked that question. Um, maybe we'll just field a phone call and, and just kind of hear what, what, what you're actually thinking and then we can go from there. Okay, one more question. How many BACnet, BACnet networks are typically used in a large deployment? Depends how large the deployment is, I think. Um, Oftentimes they will have one per system, uh, you know, a system being a, a rooftop or an air handler or a mechanical room. Uh, but if there's, you know, 30 systems in that building, there may be 30 plus networks to go with it. Uh, with, with MSTP, especially if you have a lot of these sensors going with them. But uh, we can we can get into that a little bit more detail afterwards as well if there's specific questions with that, for sure. Okay, that's all the questions that we have right now.
If you can think of any questions after the webinar today, please email myself at training at us.belimo.com and I'll make sure that we get the questions over to our presenters so they can answer your questions. Thank you very much, Eddie and DJ, for presenting today. Thank you everyone for taking time out to join us. And please join us for our next webinar on October 27th for a discussion on the benefits of piping packages. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.